comes from my heart. Can I do that? Okay. But first, I'm going to tell you that there was two little uh, children at the church um, the Sunday before Christmas. And they were singing, right? They were caroling. And the boy concluded the song, Silent Night. He was all passionate. And he said, sleep and heavenly beans. And then the sister <laughs> pushes him and says, it's not beans, it's peas. <laughs> Both of them were wrong. You know, I'm sorry. She was meaning peace, not peace. But anyways. <laughs> Can you help me with the screens with those words that I said? I told them, I don't know, I told them to say, that's the difference. That was my joke. Okay, all right. <laughs> you see, many of us, many of us, we don't care. By the time that Christmas comes along, we're like this little boy. We don't know the difference between peace and peace because there's no peace at all, right? Because of the stress. And I want you to look at this picture and go ahead and put the title. The title of my message is this, How to Handle Christmas Stress. <laughs> How many of you look like this lady by the end? February 24th, you're like this, right? Uh-huh. It's just me, Pastor. Oh, okay. All right. I'll preach it to me. But how many of you want to learn this morning how to handle Christmas stress? Yes? Okay. All right. So those of you that raise your hands, I'm going to preach to you, okay? And the rest, I don't know. You just take a ride with us. Amen. Well, uh, there's so many things that can bring stress to our lives. Let me, I've compiled a, uh, a list of things that can maybe ring the bell with you that can uh, give you stress. Uh, for example, shopping for gifts, getting to the necessary holiday parties, putting up the decoration, oh my goodness, cooking a meal, wrapping the gifts, making enough cookies and, breads, and bread to give to everybody, amen? Buying, me on the list, okay? Buying a tree. When you hear all these things, you can get stressed. Fighting the traffic, having enough money to buy gifts, right? If married, figuring out where are we going to go first, your parents, my parents, without offending anybody, right? All those stores are out of the gift that you're looking for. That can give you stress, right? Three frightening words, some assembly required, right? <laughs> yes, parents. Having the right clothes for the social occasions. Gaining weight, that's very stressful. But I love aikapurrias. I love empanadas. Come on. I love fried chicken. All right. But that can, gaining weight can give us stress. Also, uh, untangling the, the strand of lights. Oh, yes. You know, yeah, last night, my... I have, you know, there's just a few days for Christmas and Pastor Tony and I, we were thinking, okay, so today is December 5th. That was last night. And so we need to put the Christmas decoration. All the, the staff is coming to the house. They're not going to see any tree. Okay. So we were trying to figure out, and now there's these lights in our house that some of them are lead and then some of them are the old ones from like three years ago. And so some of them look yellow and some of them look blue. So we were like, ah, I was very stressful last night <laughs> trying to untangle all these lights. But listen, many of you can say, oh, no, I don't get stressed. I have the peace, peace or the peace of, no, just, the peace of God in my life. But listen, many of us can get stressed with little things. Actually, what is stress? Have you ever asked yourself, what is stress? Well, let me help you a little bit this morning. Stress is... Some, it could be with a very little thing, just any little thing that puts your body in alarm. Stress, you can be stressed just by crossing a street. Yes, yes the visitors say yes when you go to Manhattan. Oh, my goodness. You're, you just stand in a corner and then the people push you over, right? It could be very stressful. Uh, little things like making a decision. What do I eat this morning? What do I eat for lunch? Tacos or hamburger? You know, that's my stress. Um, many of us experience stress and our bodies, it's, it's the way of our body saying, hey, watch out. And like I said, it's very normal. Stress can be caused by any little change. Uh, those of you that are planners, don't raise your hand. Those to-do lists, right? Uh, some of some of us, we just like to live day by day. And some of you, like Pastor Tony, he already knows what he's doing all 2016. He has it planned. And so at night, 
we're night, you know, we're night people. And um, so it's like 11.30 and Pastor goes, do you want to know what we're doing in 2016? And I'm like, really? Uh, I'm like, okay, I'm trying to be a nice wife, you know, listening to my husband, right? And he starts, okay, January, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I'm like, oh. and then February, we're going to do this and that and that. And I'm like, okay, I'm stressed already. And it's not even February 20 something. And I'm like, until I get, I'm like, okay, he gets to March. And I'm like, no, 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 stop right there. Stop it. I tell him, no, I don't want to know anything. I'm stressed already. And it's not even in January. <laughs> and so I tell him, don't tell me. We're just going to go a day at a time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and then the planners go, no, we need to know what to do. All these Germans. Okay. <laughs> They're like, what are you talking about, Pastor Gladys? Pastor Simon, I saw your face. <laughs> but listen, us Mexicans, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> the Latino people in the house, no, just kidding. The African American people in the house, no, no. A lot of you are very organized, and it's very good because to you, that keeps the stress out of your life. To me, that gives me stress. So chill with me, all right? <laughs> One day at a time. So listen, <laughs> how do we handle stress? How do we handle Christmas stress? What does Jesus have to say to us about this? To me, it's amazing. The Bible talks about everything. Say with me, everything. 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 The Lord has an answer to everything. So what is Jesus saying to us about stress? Would he have something to say about stress? I think so. I do think so. Christ, Christ, Christ has something to say to us about stress. And after all, Christmas, it's his birthday, right? Yes. And let me tell you something. There's a story in the book of Luke, if you can put it on where this is not a Christmas party, but it was a party. And Jesus, like in Christmas, he was the honored guest. Amen? So let's go read it for, for all of us here. Go to 38, and it says, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha, say with me, Martha, okay, opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, say Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. She sounds stressful, right? And then Jesus comes, comes very calm. He says, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Say with me, needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will, be not, and it will not be taken away from her. Hmm. I find that this story that many of us know is trying to talk to us about how to handle stress, how to handle Christmas stress. And Jesus has the answer here. And I think the answer for us this, this holidays, these, this uh, Christmas season, is actually to be like Mary. How to handle Christmas stress? We need to be like Mary. Say to your neighbor, you need to be like Mary. We need to be like Mary. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised that many of us have already... Maybe when we come, we're getting ready to go to church. You know, they're going to pick you up. And maybe some of you already exchanged heated words, you know. Come on, let's go. It's time to go to church. They're going to come. They're going to honk the horn and you're not ready. Put your shoes on. Right? Uh-huh. No, you guys are all saints. You have the peace of God. Uh-huh. All right, this holiday. But listen, I wouldn't be surprised that uh, a few of you are... Dreading the days of, of, of holidays, of Christmas. And I wouldn't be surprised that some of you are mentally arranging already a to-do list. You're pretending to listen to me, but you're like, oh, she said to-do list. Okay. And you're 
you're doing already a to-do list. During my sermon, come on. All right, okay, you're listening. But listen, we need to understand that Jesus here is saying, you don't want to have stress, you need to be like Mary. You need to be like Mary. And how did Mary, what did she do? Let's see a little, a little points, some points there that we can learn from her. Number one, only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better. These words from Jesus, we can understand how to deal with stress. Jesus is saying, only one thing is needed. And if you don't hear me after this, it's okay. But you need to understand, Jesus is saying, you, to get rid of stress, you need to do what is needed. Amen? Number two, Mary, to be like Mary, Mary was, she realized that spending time with Jesus was more important than all the external preparations. You see, many times I've heard this from my husband and I want to repeat it. Many times we are doing things that are important, but they're not a priority. They're not what God wants for your life. They're not needed. Say with me, needed. You see, Martha was so stressed out that she went to Jesus and he, she's like, oh, don't you care, Jesus? She's not helping me. Look at her. Right? And what about, my husband has said this and I want to repeat it. Many times we criticize Mary because she was sitting down, but maybe because she was close to Jesus. She knew Jesus was fasting. And she was so smart. She's like, okay, he just wants water, so I'm going to sit right here. And here it is, Mary, all crazy, going around with the preparations. I'm sorry, Martha, she was going crazy, but she doesn't know that Jesus doesn't want any food. And he was the guest. And the most important, the needed, say with me, needed, the needed thing of the day was to be, like, to be close and by the feet of Jesus. And let me tell you something. Can I be honest with you? Many times, many, many times, I am running like a chicken without a head. Come on, the Texas came out of me. The Texan. But it's true. I, have you ever seen a chicken without a head? I have. It's true. I come from my ranch, from a farm in Mexico. And I remember my grandma, she was a good cook. She, Elsa, she loved to do some chicken soup. How many of you like some chicken noodle soup? Chicken, okay. <laughs> hey, that's an old one. We don't sing that anymore. But listen, she used to cook the best chicken noodle soup ever. But I remember her going to the farm and putting the head off the chicken, and then the, the chicken would be like running. It's true. New Yorkers, it's true. The chicken goes without the head, right? It's true. <laughs> it's it's kind of creepy, but it's true. I don't know what's going on, but listen. Nobody's going to hear me from that. They're going to be like, what? Okay, come back, come back. Listen, we need to understand that a lot of us, sometimes we're running around with, yes, important things, but not what is needed. Why? Because we're not where we need to be. We're not listening to God. We're not spending time with Jesus. Are you with me? We need to spend time with Jesus. We need to be like Mary. And we need to stop being like Martha. And we need to be like Mary. How can I do that if I have a list like this to be done? I have to, be I have to do laundry. I have to cook. I have to finish my lesson. I have to finish my, what's it called? Interns, your folder, right? Your to-do folder. You're like, ah, don't mention it. Uh, moms, I have to do all these things. Dad, I have to go to work. I have to do this and that. You know, I don't know how many things you have to do. But if we're not spending time with God, we're not going to know how to do them. We're not going to know what should we do first. I cannot, I cannot tell you the many, many times when I did whatever I thought I had to do, and I ended up stressed. I ended up not finishing what I had to do because I neglected my time with God. And I was so cranky, you know, with my children. You, Pastor Gladys, you should be in the, in the, in the van in the morning at 7 o'clock. 
here's the cereal, here's the Cheerios, your yogurt, Jonathan, here. And my kids are like, okay, ma, all right, chill, take a chill pill, ma. <laughs> but whenever, and I've noticed, I know, whenever I do what it's right first, I'm more calm, and it doesn't matter if they come in the morning and they tell me, hey, pastor, can you help us feeding 30 people? And I don't stress out. I'm like, okay, okay. That happened to me. This, me and my big ideas, here we are at the beginning of the week, and I tell my husband, hey, you have a very heavy schedule. What do you think I should, maybe I should preach? Big idea, right? I was so stressed by the end of Wednesday night. I'm like, what did I say? <laughs> And, uh, but listen, I'm living it. What, what, that's why I, I'm, I'm careful what I'm going to say because whatever I preach, I have to go through it. Yes, right? How many preachers out there? Yes. It's so true. I was going to talk to you about how to handle stress. And this morning I'm like, ah, where's my, where are my patty holes? Where my? And pastor goes, you're going to preach about stress, honey? Calm down. I'm like, okay he's like praying for me in the morning father give her the word and help her not to be so stressed I'm like <laughs> right but listen many of you think we we got it all together we whenever go like this in your hand whenever you point the finger three point to you back so be careful what you're pointing at okay be careful. Say with me, hallelujah. hallelujah. We need to understand that we need to be like Mary. But it enable for us to be like Mary, we need a supernatural help. Amen? That is called the Holy Spirit. Amen? How many of you agree with me? We are not gods. You see, whenever we want to do everything, we're saying we're God and we can do everything. Let me say it again. What did I say? <laughs> You're stressing me out. I forgot what I said. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that whenever we pretend to be able to do everything, we're trying to be like God. I have good news for you. You're not God. Yay! <laughs> you can't do everything. Amen? You can't do everything. Hallelujah. Ding, 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 ding. I'm human. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to have a to-do list. And, I'm, and then I'm only going to do one thing. <laughs> I'm the type of, I do my to-do, thank God for smartphones. I do my to-do list and then I forget what my to-do list is. <laughs> Poor husband. He's so organized. <laughs> That's why he, he got me a smartphone. He's like, the, your to-do list, it's in your phone right there, honey. Open it up. All right. <laughs> But listen, we need to understand that we're not God, but we serve a mighty God. Amen? That we have a promise from him, a promise that says, come on to me, come to me, all ye that are tired. Amen? Let me, let me read it to you. It's beautiful. It says, Matthew 11, 11, 28. And don't stress over there because I didn't give it to you. But it says, come to me all. Come to me who? All of you who are tired and have heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Can you embrace that rest, that peace? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. We need to be like Mary, and we need to understand that when we embrace the Mary attributes, we, we will have peace, and we will get rid of all this stress that is going to make us feel bad and maybe even sickness sick sick get our body sick from the stress from the toxins you know when we stress like pastor says uh, last week when you're angry your body is all stressed out right and i think this is from the holy spirit because it goes hand in hand with last week's message and tonight, actually, the movie Inside Out is going to talk to us about our emotions, how we need to handle them, and we need to understand them. Because God made us human, ding, 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 human with emotions, and we need to understand that under the Holy Spirit, we can control them. Amen? 
I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a sound mind. Amen. This is the word from the Lord. So if you are a to-do list doer, here we go. Some steps, how to get rid of stress. Number one, lay out a plan. We need to lay out a plan. State your ex expectation up front. What is the main thing that needs to be ha to happen this Christmas? Plan ahead. Share the load with others. Gladys, Lara. <laughs> Share the load with others. Don't be a chicken without a head, okay? We need to understand that others can help us, that our kids want to come and help us do the Christmas dinner or whatever we're doing, the task that we need to do. Share the load. Lighten the calendar. Say which, which events are optional. What can I cross out so this Christmas will be better? And then, very important, respect your budget. Mm. Have you determined how much you will spend before you go shopping? Please do so because then your credit cards are going to come to the top. Then you have to work more hours to pay your debts and then you're going to be stressed out. All right? So do a budget before you go shopping. Okay? This is so practical. You know, many of you think, oh, church is just about Bible. Yes, Bible talks about practical things too. Amen? God wants us to be smart. God wants us to enjoy. And that I'm going to go to the, the last point. I want you to write it down. So number two, put your, your most significant relationships first. It's on the screen. If you want to get rid of stress, you need to have a plan. But then you need to do this. This is what Mary did. Mary knew that Jesus was number one for her. And that's why she said, I don't care about any preparation. I want to be with Jesus. And you need to put, put it on, please, Amanda. Leave it there. Put your most significant person. For me, this is my list. For me, the most significant relationships that I have first is Christ. Spending personal time with him, worshiping him at church, it's more important than any other thing. That's why I have, a, I have a hard time with people that share with me, oh, I couldn't go to church because I had to do this. What? Can I say it again? I didn't go to church because I had to do all these. What? What? <laughs> I'm becoming a New Yorker now. What? <laughs> Listen, Christ is first. Coming to church, fellowshipping with others in Christ. Yes. Maybe you're out there like a chicken without a head looking for an apartment. And guess what? The Lord had somebody in the church that has a room for you. Hello. You missed it because you didn't come to church. It has happened. I'm doing it funny, but it's so true. This is your safe place. On Sundays, you should be here, number one thing. And not because I'm the pastor, I'm saying that. I learned that. I was safe two weeks, just two weeks saved. And I remember my mom, it was a Sunday morning, and my mom said, eh, I don't, maybe we shouldn't go to church. I'm like, what? I turned around and looked at her like fire in my eyes. And I said, no, Ma, you need to take us to church because I don't want to go back to the way we were. And I remember my mom tells me this. My mom said, those, those words that you told me made me take you in. And this is why we are saved now. Amen? You need to put your, your relationships first. So it's Christ. And then if you're married, your spouse. And, and then your family. And then your friends. When you have that, you, you're going to be blessed. Amen? How many of you want to be blessed? Hallelujah. We need to do that. And then number three. How many of you want to know number three? Yes? Listen, this is very simple. It's self-explanatory. But focus on those who are in need. Focus on those. It says number four, but it's number three. We made a mistake. Number three, focus on those who are in need. 
When in this house, you're like, oh, I don't have money for that. I don't have money. I don't have. But listen, when you go out, I know of a friend that on Thanksgiving, she went and fed the homeless. I'm like, wow, that's beautiful. You know, when we focus on others rather than ourselves, we're going to find out how much we have, how blessed we are. I said over and over, we, we, we praise God because my children have the opportunity to go with the missions on mission fields with us, on mission trips to, with us, and they know. Yes, they live in Brooklyn. The, yes, they don't have a big house like their cousins in Texas. Yes, they don't have a big high school field, you know, like in, in, their, in their cousin's place or in Texas. But listen, my children know they're blessed because they've seen the, the need of others. When we go and see, and they see that kids don't have a day's meal. When we go to Mexico and they see, or other countries, and they see that they're eating, like you said, you know, water with a little bit of rice so it'll give flavor. I tell them, I make sure they know what they have. And it doesn't matter that they don't have a big space and they don't have all these luxuries and they live in Brooklyn. It's fine because they know how blessed they are. Because what? They focus on what? On those they have a need. When you do this, we're being like Christ. The Lord and Lord and King of Kings, he left his throne and he came to die on the cross for us. Amen. We give a hand to the Lord. Yes, come on. They're telling me to rush. Yes, I'm rushing. Number four, are you ready? I want you to pay close attention to this. When you understand these sentences, do you have it? It says, you have just enough time to do God's will. Just take it off of that. Number, five, number four, write it with me. I just have enough, just enough time to do God's will. What am I saying? These are the most free, freeing sentences that you'll ever read, that you'll ever hear. Say with me, I have just enough time to do God's will. You need to understand this. Even two, two things. If you're not true of what you're saying of this declaration, number one, you're either doing things that God doesn't want you to do, he didn't intend it for you to do, or number two, you're doing the things God intended the wrong way. In other words, and I went to Ecclesiastes, and that's a long name for me. I asked the first session, I said, why do we, we don't have a name like in the Bible like Pancho? They go to Pancho book, you know, that's Ecclesiastes. Wow, that's a long name. Poor dude. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3.13 says, all of us should enjoy what we have worked for. And then read the last sentence with me. It is God's gift. If we want to be peaceful, if we, don't have, if we don't want to have stress in our lives, we need to understand this verse. We need to enjoy the moment. Say with me, enjoy the moment. Mary was enjoying the moment. This was God's gift for her. She didn't, she didn't care about her stressful sister, her bipolar sister or whatever. Just kidding. Ooh, okay. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. We need to understand that we need to enjoy the moment because this is God's gift for us. Can you leave it up there for me, please? Leave the verse. If you want to get rid of stress, you need to embrace the peace of God in our life. Amen? You need to enjoy the moment. You need to enjoy the presence of God in your life. And this is the solution to get rid of stress. Amen? Amen. Give a hand to the Lord. Let's pray. Let's pray. Bow your heads, please. Say, God, help me to learn to do your will. You, you can stop repeating. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much for your word that we should enjoy 
Father, every single thing, every single moment, because we've worked for it and it's a gift from you to us. Father, help us to embrace the character of Mary. Help us to embrace your presence every day when we are in front of you, Father. Help us, Holy Spirit, to do what is needed and not what we think is priority. Holy Spirit, help us to understand that as we seek the kingdom of God first, all the other things will be added on to us. Thank you, God, because we can come to you if we're stressed, if we're tired, and you will give us peace.